the cubic function y equals x cubed is graphed. For this function, determine a, the x-intercept, b, the y-intercept, c, the domain, d, the range, and e, whether the function is even, odd, or neither. And this function is graphed in blue to the right here. So before we jump into each, each one of a, a to e, uh, let's have a, a quick review of, of what the cubic function uh, graph looks like, or if this is the first time you've seen it before, let's have a quick analysis of it. Uh, so it, it seems to be this, this function um, that uh, seems to be, uh, as the further away we get from the origin, the more it seems to increase. So the slope of this line up here at this point seems to be quite steep, whereas the slope of the line here seems to be not as steep. Similarly, the slope here is not as steep, but it's, it's quite steep uh, down here. So that's an interesting fact that we can, we can note about this function. It also seems to cross here at the origin. Given that information, let's see if we can't answer a few of these. So first we've got to determine the x-intercept. Well here, we always we know that the x-intercept uh, is the point at which this graph crosses the x-axis, and it crosses the x-axis whenever y equals zero. So from the graph, we can clearly see that it, it seems to cross here at the origin. This seems to be the x-intercept, and it, it seems to be the only x-intercept. Let's just check that algebraically. So here, what we're looking for is the point at which y equals zero. So let's, let's say at y equals zero here, we get zero equals x cubed. And if we simplify both sides, we can take the cubed, the cubed root of both sides. We'd get the cubed root of zero equals the cubed root of x cubed, which is just going to be x. And the cubed root of zero is just zero. So we've got zero equals x. No way of writing this as x equals zero. In other words, at y equals zero, x equals zero, which is what we expected. In other words, there is a single x-intercept, and that x-intercept is the point zero, zero, which is the origin. What about the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is the point at which this graph crosses the y-axis, and that is associated with uh, the value x equals zero. That's how the y-intercept is defined. Well, if we input y, if we put input x equals zero into this equation, we're going to get, let's do it over, over here, we're going to get y equals zero cubed. Well, zero times zero times zero is just zero. So that's just going to correspond to the point or to the value y equals zero. In other words, again, we found that the, the, only, the only point where this graph crosses the y-axis is the same point as where the graph crosses the x-axis. That is, it's the origin. So the point zero, zero is the y-intercept of this function. Let's go ahead and consider the domain. And you might recall that the domain consists of the set of all possible inputs for this function or all possible x values that this function can, uh, can take, or the, the x values that can be input into this function. Well, looking at this function here, it seems we could, we could choose any value and input it on, on this side. We've got no restrictions on x, so we could input x equals 0, or x equals 100, or x equals minus 100. We could input fractional values. We could input any value here and we'd get a, a valid corresponding y value. Um, and this is the same as saying that if we uh, if we took this graph and we projected this graph onto the x-axis, we've got to remember that really we, we've probably got arrows here at the end of our uh, at the end of our function, indicating that it continues this behavior of, of heading to the right and up and heading to the to the left and down forever beyond the confines of our graph. If we were to project this onto the x-axis, then we would get uh, a line that looks something like this in green. And this would indicate that all x values are part of the domain. So either way, whether we consider it algebraically or whether we consider it graphically, it turns out that the domain consists of all real x. That's the domain. What about the range? 
Well, the range, you might recall, is all the possible outputs for this equation. Or another way of saying that is all possible y values that could be output from, from this function. Let's consider the range. Uh, well, the range here, if, if we input a positive value on this side in a positive x value, we tend to get a positive y value. We always get a positive y value. And if we input a negative x value, we get a negative y value. And this is reflected in the graph. Um, so what this means is that if, uh, if we were to input, every, every y value has some associated input value with it. So it wouldn't matter what y value we picked, whether it was positive or negative or zero, we could always find a corresponding x value. Uh, and consequently, the range is going to be all real y. Another way that we could consider this is we could, uh, we could reflect this, um, this, this function or the graph of this function onto the y-axis. And if we do it, if we reflect this onto the y-axis, we'll get a line segment corresponding to what I've just drawn in orange. We'll have an arrow at the top and an arrow at the bottom indicating that all y values uh, greater than y equals 8 and all y values less than y equals minus 8 are going to be included here. And this line segment, if we view this y-axis as the number line, this corresponds to all real values of y. So consequently that's the range. Finally, we've got one more to go, we've done a to d, let's consider e. Is this function even, odd, or neither? Well, there's a couple of ways we could figure this out. The first way is that we could look at this graph and we could consider whether it has symmetry uh, about the y-axis. So whether it's, if, if we reflect this graph in the y-axis, do we get the same graph? If we were to reflect this in the y-axis, we'd get something that would look like this, which looks quite different to the graph that we've got here. So that means that this graph isn't even. However, it does have point symmetry around the origin. And the definition of an odd function is that it has point symmetry around the origin. So in other words, if we were to rotate this graph 180 degrees, we would get exactly the same graph as what we started with. Consequently, we can say that this function is odd. A second way that we could figure this out is we, we could recall that the definition of an odd function is that f of minus x equals minus f of x. Here, instead of writing y equals x cubed, we could easily write f of x equals x cubed. And this would represent the same function as represented by y equals x cubed. Well, if that's the case, let's consider f of minus x. Well, f of minus x, we're going to get minus x cubed here, since f of x is x cubed. So here, a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative. So this is going to be negative, and then x times x times x is x cubed. Negative x cubed. Now notice that fx, f of x equals x cubed. So this is the same as saying negative x cubed or negative f of x. So consequently, we have f of negative x equals negative fx. This uh, is the same as the definition for an odd function. So all odd functions have this property. So ultimately we could look at the graph and we could determine whether it is odd uh, graphically or alternatively we could have substituted minus x into this equation and then determined its relationship to the original equation. Either way we find that the function is odd. Okay, so we've now found a to e for this function.